Hi, Pat O'Neill, physician assistant, and what we're going to cover now is the hypothermia portion of the March principle. So again, March is, stands for massive bleeding, airway, respirations, circulation, and hypothermia. So on this particular patient, he was pretty much a train wreck. Most of his damage was on the left side of his body from either, I don't know, we'll, we'll call it a blast, you can call it a motorcycle injury where he went just skidding down the road all on his left side, whatever you want to call it. But he had an amputation of the left lower extremity, the left upper arm, he had some burns to his face, um, he had injury to the, uh, the left anterior portion of the chest with, with three small wounds, we covered that with uh, with a vented chest seal. Um, so we handled all the massive bleeding, the airway with the NPA, respirations, then we went back to circulation. We did a couple of really nice stunt dressings on here. Uh, we did check the back side. The back side was clear. That is when we put the blizzard blanket on because we really only wanted to roll this patient one time. So the blizzard blanket is in place. Uh, we had a few minutes left, so we went ahead and put on this nice little splint because we thought he might have an ankle fracture down here. So now it's time to wrap him up. We have uh, the helicopters coming in in 10 minutes or so. So we want to protect this guy's body temperature. Hypothermia is one of the four preventable causes of death in trauma. We need to keep him warm because his body does not have the ability to regulate its temperature. He's probably in shock, his skin is cold, he's clammy, he's sweating, um, he's lost blood. Uh, we need to get him nice and wrapped up. Now, if we, have a, we have a video on the blizzard blanket all by itself. It talks about the, the temperature capabilities uh, and, and all that sort of stuff. Here, I just want to show you how we're actually going to wrap him up. So, one of the things we want to do is make sure that that we have enough for the head and the feet. We did that when we attached it. I also want to make sure that we can reassess some of these limbs um, just for circulation purposes and everything. So we're going to cut little windows in here later on. Some people like to start at the head, others like to start at the feet. I don't care where you start from as long as it all gets done. I personally like to come up to the head and do that first because we lose more heat from the head. So I'm going to bring this up, up to here. Some of these hypothermia kits actually have like a little cap a wool cap or a propylene cap or whatever, I don't know, um, that you can put right on the patient. Okay. Now we want to wrap this fairly tight around this guy. The tighter it is, the more air is going to be maintained. The easier it's going to be for him to stay warm. You cannot use enough tape on one of these guys, especially if you think he's going to be getting on a helicopter. I'm here to tell you that that rotor wash will absolutely just wreak havoc on the blizzard blanket. When you're putting this tape on, make sure that you're not... Uh, putting it on too tight, especially around the throat area.
doesn't take up a whole lot of room. You can put one of these inside your vehicle just in case you get stuck in a, in a snow drift or something. Plenty of room in here for a couple of people. Well, a couple of normal sized people. If you're a little bit weight challenged, you might not be able to get two people in there. I know some of y'all are looking at me thinking, yeah, Pat, that's going to be one just for you, buddy. Don't judge. Working with gloves can be a little bit uh, difficult at times. You just have to learn to, to do that. That's where we train like we fight, right? All right, so I'm just getting a little bit in it, of it in here. Come down to the feet. Just like a Christmas present. We're going to wrap them all up nice and tight here. Pretty much this is how I wrap my Christmas presents too. They're not real pretty. And you would not be wrong in just taping the heck out of this thing. Like I said, you got the rotor wash coming in. It's going to want to grab that blanket and just open it up. Now at this point, we might want to cut in some like some little windows here, or put a casualty card or something like that. I can reach up here to the patient's neck. I can feel his carotid pulse. I can still look, listen, and feel, see rise and fall of the chest. I can hear breath sounds. I can feel the mist on my face. Um, but the way we cut a window in, and I'm going to do it on this side for you is you just take a, a little piece of this blanket and you open it up. And you just do it on three sides. Okay, if I needed to check a pulse, if I needed a, if I had a wound, uh, like over here I have the, the tourniquet on. From time to time you're gonna wanna leave that flight medic or the ambulance person a little window so he can check that, make sure that everything's going okay, that one of your tourniquets hasn't loosened up that uh, one of your dressings has come undone and the patient's bleeding. Nothing is worse than to get the patient beautifully packaged like this. You get them into the trauma center, they go and they rip off the, uh, the tape, they open up the blanket and out pours two, three liters of blood that the medic could not see because it was inside this blanket. So we do put in, uh, we do advise that you put in a window 
you can cover that with a simple piece of uh, one inch tape. When the medic gets there, you tell him, hey, listen, I put a couple of windows in here for you so that you can check pulse. Leave him a little courtesy tab so that he can pull it, look, see what he's got to see, then close it back up. So this will keep the patient warm during transport. This is the, uh, the blizzard blanket. We'll, like I said, we do have another video completely on that. You might want to check that one out. But this patient is now ready to roll. Thanks. <laughs>